So, you want to get into Queen's Medicine, the so-called black box of Ontario med schools? We actually got interviews from Queen's this cycle, and that's why today we'll be sharing with you all of the information we gathered over the course of the admissions process that you absolutely will not be able to find anywhere else. Before we get started, you're probably wondering how hard it is to actually get into the Queen's Medical School. So statistically last year, 5,540 people applied and 512 received an interview. And out of the 512, 108 got an acceptance. This makes the acceptance rate 2% making it one of the hardest medical schools to get into statistically. Also, we'd like to mention that we're in no way associated with the Queen's admission process, and all this information we're providing to you is only based on our own experiences and what we've researched online. Now, if you don't know anything about Queen's Med, here's a quick overview of what you're getting yourself into. The program is four years long, like most other med schools, and it only has one campus that's located with the main university in Kingston. One fact about Kingston is that if you're a foodie, Kingston has one of the highest restaurant densities in Canada. So if you're looking for a restaurant, you won't be left hungry. Another cool fact about Queens is that they have their very own cadaver lab, so you can work with real human bodies. But don't try to recreate Friday the 13th with them. In addition, Queen's class size is about 100, so past students have actually talked about how they were able to form tight-knit relations with their classmates and faculty and staff much easier than bigger schools like U of T and McMaster. Let's now move on to the pre-interview process. Almost everything will be looked at throughout this process. Your GPA, Casper, and MCAT will all have cutoffs, and they're not published by Queen's, hence the name Black Box that's given to them by many med students. You're going to have to meet each of these individual cutoffs and only then will your file move on to file review. Also, these cutoffs change every single year because they depend on other students and their own stats. Let's talk about your GPA first. Queens used to look at your two most recent years of study and calculate your GPA based on just those two years. However, they've actually announced that with all future application cycles, including the upcoming one, Queens will be switching to looking at your overall or accumulative GPA like some other med schools. While Queens hasn't made it clear what their GPA cutoff is, it's not even listed on their website anywhere, we can estimate what a competitive GPA looks like. We know that the average accepted GPA for Queens last year was a 3.85, so you'll probably need somewhere around that number to get accepted and get past the stages. As far as the MCAT scores go, you're going to need to meet two requirements. First of all, you'll need to have a high enough overall MCAT score, and you're also going to have to have high enough scores for each of the sections. For the overall MCAT, the average score was 513 this past cycle, so anywhere one or two points away from there should be fine. For the section cutoffs, 127 in CARS and 126 in the other sections should be fine. This is based on what other applicants have told us and also anecdotes from forums while also looking at stats from other schools like Western. For Casper, that's probably the hardest stat to give a number for, but the best rule of thumb to follow is that the higher your score, the better your chances are of getting in and even getting past the interview stage. Queens will look at your ABS and references during that file review stage we were just talking about. During this time, your ABS is very important because Queen's puts a lot of importance onto your extracurriculars. The ABS statement has up to 32 entries, so make sure you fill them out, and they're split into a few sections. Some of those sections are something like research, extracurriculars, awards and accomplishments, and volunteering. Try to include something in every section of your ABS. Show that you're a well-rounded applicant. And in addition, you obviously need a verifier for each activity. Lastly, Queens has stated that they do not look at activities that you did in high school. So even if you included them, they won't be looking at it. If you started the activity in high school and continued it into university, they will probably look at the times that include the university more than the high school. Then, the admissions team scores you based on your MCAT, Casper, cumulative GPA, references, and ABS. This total score is put into a list with the highest scores at the top of the list and the lowest scores at the bottom. Then, 
Queens will select approximately 500 applicants who have the top 500 scores for an interview. But that's only step one. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Queens is the only medical school in Canada that has a two-part interview process. First, they're going to send you an MMI invite, and then if you do well on that, then you'll get a second invitation probably a month later that tells you that you're invited to their panel interview. MMI stands for multiple mini interviews. And in this format of interviews, you're given a prompt and you're supposed to read and think about it critically and then answer the prompt. And just like this, you're supposed to go through multiple different prompts and each prompt is rated by a new interviewer. And Queens just mentioned that they are going to be holding their interviews online. So be prepared to talk to a screen just like we are right now. And I'll attach a link in the description about some general MMI tips that might help you. As we said, if you do well on your MMI, you're going to be invited for a panel interview. For this, it'll be virtual, just like your MMI, but the difference here is that you'll actually be interviewed by real people in real time. Now, Queen's doesn't actually provide more information about this publicly, so if you do want more details, you gotta get there. If you're wondering how Queen's marks the interviews and comes to a decision, it's one of the greatest mysteries in the world because it's so confidential. However, there are some things you can do such as follow the canned meds rules and also just practice every single type of question so you know what's coming and don't get hit by surprise. Now all that's left is months and months of waiting and waiting and stress and anxiety. Try not to go crazy. Remember that all of the results for all medical schools in Ontario comes on the second Tuesday of May. So there you have it. These are all the steps of getting into Queen's Medicine in Ontario, Canada. And we hope you found this video helpful. We made a similar guide like this for UFT. Queens is much harder to research for because it's such a black box and they hide a lot of their statistics. But we tried our best. We searched throughout the internet for you guys, so make sure you like and subscribe. See you next time.